Music matters. Omni, how you guys doing? I am good. Very fantastic. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Appreciate you coming on the show, guys. Appreciate you reaching out. Yeah, thanks for having us. This is life changing. I appreciate it. Dude, of course, of course, of course. I, I'm, I'm excited to have you guys on. I was excited when you reached out because as soon as you reached out, I listened to your stuff and I was like, wow, this is crazy. Like, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan of what you guys do. Like, I really love your stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'm, glad, I'm glad you liked it because I was like, I'm not gonna lie, when I hit you up, I was like, this, I was nervous as fuck because I was like, I hope he likes our shit. <laughs> No, so bro, was, for real. I love your shit, bro. Like, you, you guys are crazy. Like, you guys are, like, make the exact style of hip-hop that, like, I'm super into. So, like, it just it just kind of works out. The, the whole project I've had on repeat, bro, I've literally been bumping it. I've been showing it to everybody. <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy. I appreciate it. Appreciate Dude, it. of course, of course. How did you guys hear about us? Because I was surprised when you reached out uh, to hear that you were from Atlanta, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, basically, it was, it was Kid Lords. Shout out to them. Um, I, I saw them post like a clip of y'all's on um, a clip of their shit on uh, their page, and I was like, "Oh, this is fire!" And I like how it was edited and put together. It's very like professional. Like, I was like, "This is interesting." So I started watching. I going through, I goes going through all your pages and shit. And I was like, "Oh!" And I started watching the podcast. I was like, "This is interesting," and I got very like hooked because I was like, "This is cool as fuck." And I told uh, David and Jamie, and I was like, "Yo, we gotta we gotta do something. This is fire." I just stopped shot the DM. <laughs> we here now. That's love, bro. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Do you find yourself doing stuff like that a lot? Like reaching out to people on Instagram and just kind of trying to stay tapped in that way? Dude, every day. Like, I'm like, I try, to, I try to find someone every day to talk to us, like, this new. Because I've learned that, you know, net, like your network is your net worth. So whoever you know mm. is going to help you. And if you can help them, and then y'all can just make a connection. It's always, it's always a good thing to have. Just build a relationship with someone that you book with. I've never heard that quote before, but I think that's that's very true. Your network is your net worth. I like that, especially in this industry, man. And uh, I think what's cool is like it's very easy to tell when somebody reaches out to you on something like, oh, uh, like I almost on like some like uh, just strictly transactional shit. You know what I mean? Like somebody reaches out to you just because you can give something to them or they can give something to you, etc. But it's like I I really like when somebody reaches out to me and like. It doesn't feel like that. Like when you guys reached out, it wasn't even like, oh, let me get an interview. It was like, oh, like we just you just support, support, et cetera. But no, I yeah, I appreciate you guys reaching out. First it, first artist I've ever interviewed from Atlanta, I think. Oh, for sure. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see I see you got the Braves jersey on, man. You just, you guys just pillaged our my, my first baseman, Matt Olson. Oh yeah. Sorry about oh, yeah. that. We needed something. We, we lost we Freddie Freeman though. Freddie's yeah, Freddie's of the Dodgers. Yeah. yeah man. That's tragic. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a big baseball fan, so it was like the first thing I saw. You guys are World Series champions, man. How's that feel? We finally did yeah, it, dude. Did it. Yeah. it sucks being a Braves fan, I'm not gonna lie. It's just years of almost, but not not <laughs> close not, enough, dude. You might do it. <laughs> That's just that Atlanta period, yeah. yeah. Not anymore. Yeah, we yeah, the Falcons. <laughs> Fun. they Swat are line. always like on the precipice like they're always like close to being like a championship team but the lot they like very rarely get to that point yeah it's cool to see freddie win a championship in atlanta too he's been there his entire career like he deserves it yeah no 100 percent. so no, how did I'm you guys I... uh oh sorry what were you saying i was just saying i'm sad cunha couldn't play though he was injured yeah he still pulled it out yeah, they still pulled it out without him though, which I'm shocked. Dude, I just love like the swag like that Atlanta had at that time with Jock Peterson and everything, the pearls, bro. Yeah. If if I was a Braves fan, I would have been like wearing pearls everywhere. <laughs> oh no, for sure. <laughs> That's just sick. Okay, so how did you guys um first meet? Like how long have you known each other? Did you grow up together or what? Let them know. Sing it, sing the song. Yeah, me and Jamie, uh, well, I moved to the town that we live in now. Uh, when I was about like in middle school, I don't remember what age. But then I remember me and him hit it off pretty uh, fast. Whenever we were in middle school in a math class, we just became friends. We've been best friends ever since. And then I met him freshman year of high school, and we started making music like junior year, I think. And I, me and him, always talked about music all the time. So that's the one thing we really bonded over. And I was making beats, but I didn't tell nobody. And I eventually told him, and I said. Hey, I don't want to rap on these alone. I don't want to get made fun of alone. Will you rap with me or whatever? And then he got on with it or with me. And then the very next day we went to Jordan and said, Hey, bro, we're making beats. 
or whatever, and um, we we're gonna start rapping on him. And then he was like, he laughed in our I face. I said, bro, shut the fuck up. I, that's, that, I <laughs> literally said, fuck, stop. Because we're not, we're not, we weren't serious. We still aren't serious. We're so like childish. So when they, whenever they came to me, I was like, stop. We're too damn derpy to be doing this rapping <laughs> shit. We're not cool. We're a bunch of fucking nerds. And I literally like a year later, I dropped out of college and I spent like five thousand dollars on equipment. I said, if we're gonna do this shit, we might as well just go all in. Cause it's, mm-hmm. it's, I'm like, if, if you're, if you're, if you're with a group of people who do things that you're not doing, eventually you're gonna start doing it. Cause you, cause you see them every day doing it. And how hard they're working at it, you're like, dude, that's fire. I wanna, I wanna join in. So, plus, I want, I've always wanted like a group of people to do stuff with, like, even if it's gaming or sports, just wanted like someone to bond with. So, I was seeing them too, and I was like, fuck it, this is it. It's an opportunity. So I just leap with them. That's huge. You have to have like a group of people around you that are like, pushing you in the same way that you're pushing them i think it, it, it's like corny but i really do think there's so much truth to like if you are around people that are elevating you'll elevate if you're around people that are dragging you down they'll drag you down i think there's so much truth to that people really are a product of their environment did you guys grow up in uh like a small town outside of atlanta like is there a lot of music in where you grew up or did you grow up like in central atlanta uh, we definitely a small town like it's probably about 45 minutes Right, yeah. Away from Atlanta, yeah. and but it's, it's pretty racist. No, I don't racist as fuck. I got called. I don't know if I can say this in the show. I got called the N word every single day <laughs> at high school. Like it's so bad. I like, only had what? like three black at high school too. No, yeah, like yeah. I was out of the four black kids, I was one of them. It was every like there's so many like rednecks at our school. You couldn't do like when my school because I went to the school with them. You couldn't do anything like you to that. Like oh hey N word this N word that. I uh, you got to take it because it's just like I can't beat you when you're fifty you know your cousins i'm like i'm fucked so you just gotta take it and then you gotta get numb to it because now racism to me is just that's just normal which is sad but it's that's, that's what our town does it's so bad yes. it's so trash what the that's insane yeah. being from california and hearing that is like unfathomable oh, that's yeah, actually dude. crazy that's insane to me to hear i mean that's the type of thing that you hear about but you live in california you don't really see it so it, it, it's 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 like that it's like that open like it's seriously like that open like you can just walk somewhere and just there'll be white kids calling you shit like that. Yeah, well, we're from here. Like, what you gonna do about it? Nothing. Like, just deal with it. There's times where I'd be talking in Spanish to my parents, and like people would look at me dirty. It's just like, and there's like a lot of Hispanic people where we're from too, and like yeah. the people just don't give a fuck. They're stuck in a small town mentality. It's a lot of a lot of country shit. That's insane to me. That's actually insane to me. Just like growing up where I grew up in such a liberal place in like, I mean, just California and the Bay Area in general. I can't even imagine that. That's insane. Wow. Okay. So like growing up around that, I imagine you didn't really grow up around a lot of hip hop. Oh, no. I, well, ironically, I would say yeah. you do like the rednecks uh, bump in hip hop more than anything. Yeah, that's that's like, so I ironic. Think, yeah. yeah. And I think that's why they use the N word so much too. Cause like, I mean that I it's it's I guess they they don't think it's racist to just call your friend the N word just yeah. like as a like like as a black person would but like it's totally we know it's inappropriate yeah. but yeah it's just what it is yeah. <laughs> you know what it's just, they don't it's just so ridiculous because they'll you, they'll be like N word fuck you and then we bump a little baby all day I'm like what dude <laughs> what, get out, what are you talking about it's ridiculous See, that's actually like an insane thing to hear this is why i like interviewing people from other places because i get like really different perspectives because i just interview people from the bay area usually so it's like obviously like that is not that doesn't i, I mean i mean i'm white so obviously i wouldn't know if it happens but i don't think that happens here in the same way that it happens there like dude if you were if you were at a school in california and some white kid did that they'd get their ass beat that's just like how it is that's crazy that it's almost the opposite in a place like Georgia. Cause you, you know, being from California, you hear those stereotypes, right? You hear things like, Oh, everybody in Georgia is a racist, but like, you can't really understand it until you hear it from the mouth of somebody who's actually from a place like that. Did that discourage you uh, at all? Yeah, no one. Like, like from like making music. I don't and, know. Like, I was like, no, that gave me, that gave me like, that gave me lyrics. Like half my, half the shit right about just that. Like, it helps me a lot to write because it's like okay cool y'all y'all inspire me to talk because i'm very like real like shit to, like when i shit that's hard to me is very real shit no matter what it is like so right about you go into the bathroom 
in a cool way is just hard to me because oh, that's real. You don't gotta be this this fake. It's not gonna be a fake story to make you seem cool. It's just you being you. Like I'd rather hear about you going to the store, how you got there, and what you bought, and coming home in a cool ass way, rather than you lying to me about something that's not even real. That shit is hard as fuck. Like being yourself. Yeah. So, like, you're basically just being yourself. And that's what we're really about is doing you. Being yourself unapologetically is so hard to, to all of us because it's like because no one else is like you. So if you do that, the, the best if you be, if you're the best you, it's just cool. It's hard as fuck to us. So yeah. I, t- I took I took whatever I had, my, all my high school trauma and my all my life trauma and just rap about it. And that's just that, that, that's my favorite thing to do. Yeah, like for example, I had a RuneScape account, and the reason I wrote my like verse for Willie, I was just mad. And the, the day my RuneScape account got hacked. I just, I, I got so mad and I wrote a verse out of frustration. Yeah. And I was like, it's just stupid. It like, it, so like, fun. yeah, and it's like, it obviously is silly and stuff, but like, that's just who we are. Like, yeah. we're just, we don't take shit seriously, to be honest. So we just have fun. And that's, that's the main point though, boys. I think it's just kind of ironic how we were wearing the ski mask, but then you watch like the videos and we're like watering our grass. Like yeah. that you went oh boy is doing that so it's like ironic because you think we're hard we try to portray ourselves as this but we're really not you know what i'm saying yeah that's so funny like i think that irony is part of what makes your music compelling because it's like you guys seem relatable you know what i mean like when i listen to your stuff it doesn't sound like somebody who's so outside of my wheelhouse like it sounds like somebody who like i probably have a similar life experience too you know what i mean but it's also it's also very different it's cool to hear something like that coming out of like Atlanta too because you guys make music to me like I don't categorize like what you guys make as like anything from like a traditional southern hip-hop sound it's like very much not like a southern hip-hop sound like you guys sound more like you make music like you're from LA or like something like that it's a it's a lot more boom bappy almost the the production it seems to me like it's far more bass and like traditional hip-hop instrumentals which is not a south it's not it's not a southern thing at all yeah when you guys reached out to me, like, or go ahead, sorry. Oh yeah, I was just saying, mainly on Dope Boys, the most southern thing about it would probably just be our like energy and lyrics, yeah, that's, more than yeah. the beats, like you said. Yeah. Before we before we like continue, I think we should like because we never did this. I think we should like go around. You guys, can you guys introduce yourself and like just say like what you do in the group, etc. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm Javon Simmons. I rap. I mix. Photographer. Videographer. And then music or color or what do I do? Color grading, <laughs> pictures and videos. Um, my name's Jaime, but my, everyone calls me Jamie, and I rap. And then I am Davro, and then I do the production. I do all the beats. I do the graphic design, and I also rap. And he edits music videos. Oh yeah, I edit music videos as well. So like almost like the visual and the production aspect of it. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, so you guys, um, so you said like when you met, you first met as like friends growing up in Georgia. Uh, I know you said like there was hip hop around you. Ironically, did you like in your individual households with like your parents grow up with a lot of music around? Like, how did you guys first get interested in music individually? Uh, I think for me, so I have my dad's black and mom's white and they were divorced for a little bit. So it was very, I come on my mom's house. It was eighties rock, you know, a little bit of like, Beastie Boys here and there, a little bit of Eminem, a little bit, very like, you know, white stuff, white music stuff. And then with my dad, it was fucking Lil Wayne, LL Cool J, Run DMC, like all types of 80s, like rap. And then I think, I don't know what happened. One day, AP, uh, what was it? He played, he showed me Buster Rhymes and that shit was crazy. I was like, this, <laughs> this is this is new to me. So I was, so and that got me more into like the more energetic type of music. But you know, my parents did a good job of showing me music because they came around me all the time. I'd wake up at my grandma's house to gospel music playing because we're very Christian. And so just gospel music all the time at her house. So we were just, every time, anytime I was like, every time I'm awake, I hear music every day. Even when I was in high school, like music every single day. They do it to, to this day. So that was, that's for me. I, always grew, I grew up around music more. Yeah, and I grew up like a lot. It's my parents, they listen to a bunch of shit. My dad, he has probably like the most diverse music taste ever. But uh, I listened to a bunch of Mexican stuff, a bunch of reggaeton. And like my dad loved Chameleon Air, Three Six Mafia, Lil Wayne, Tupac, and all them. It's just like growing up around all that stuff was just like, it helped me a lot with music. And I have the taste for just about any type of music. You can ask these guys, or like, yeah. I listen to just about anything. And like sometimes shit that's literally just noise, <laughs> dude. Yeah, literally just noise. I listen to anything. 
Mm-hmm. And for me, my dad was a pastor, so it was practically just Christian music. It's 100% Christian music, but yeah. Growing up on Christian music, how did you first get into hip hop? Tony Hawk, pro skater. <laughs> they played, uh, I remember Nas Illmatic being on there and Dang Star, that one song, oh, dude, it's on the Mass Appeal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I remember I asked, I was like, I've got to get this, like, uh, or this CD or whatever. My parents, I didn't know what custom was. And they were like, okay. And then I, they gave me the free, like, the clean version. I didn't realize if that clean versions were a thing either. But because it sounded like what it sounded like on Tony Hawk, because that was clean too. But I'm pretty sure that's where I got it from, was the hip hop songs on that game. We grew up on like the same games, like RuneScape and Tony Hawk. That was like, yeah. the <laughs> shit that I was playing growing up, that like nobody else was playing. Like it was yeah. that. And then like I, I transitioned to like playing like Minecraft and like CSGO and like shit that other yeah. kids were playing. It was- Yes. Yeah, that's exactly what I did too. That's did, you guys, did, did you guys grow up playing video games? Because like this might well, be kind I, of, to, I was well, gonna say I wanted to be a YouTuber and a Twitch streamer for so long. <laughs> my, I, my freshman year so told me but to these two, I was doing YouTube. Like I had a thousand subscribers. I was like, oh my Ooh. dude. <laughs> I was I was going crazy on YouTube. And then I was streaming one day and I don't know what happened. It was like a I, I'm like I, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. My internet wasn't working. My YouTube channel was like I was losing like ten subs a day for no reason. My my stream I, I couldn't stream, and I was just like, dude, maybe I'm not I'm not meant to do this. And then next day he came to me asking me if I wanted to rap. I was just I, I'm not gossip fuck no, but I still here I am. But. <laughs> so, yeah, because I, mean, I, I don't know if this is like I, the, the, <clears throat> I, this might be like a very weird parallel to draw. But like the first off, like the production, a lot of your guys stuff, like some of the synths and some of the melodies you use, like are very video game esque to me. But then even beyond that, like just your image, like almost seems like something out of a game, like the way you guys like do like the red ski mask stuff. Like it sounds like it, it's almost like a video game aesthetic. It, 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 it's kind of what it seems like to me. Are you guys like very intentional in like the way that you kind of like curate your visuals and your aesthetics and stuff? Because it seems like you guys have like a very specific vision for that. I'm going to, it's weird. We'll have an idea. And when the thing's said and done, it's not what we thought. It's crazy. <laughs> like our, our next album, the whole idea of it is very deadpan type of like music, like fun, fun sounding music with personal, very sad personal lyrics. And the visuals are supposed to be very, you know, Southern. But dude, by the time it comes out, it could be something we don't even know. We, we, it could be something totally different. So it, I don't even, it's weird. It's, it's hard for us to say, because we could be like, oh, this is what it's going to be like. But then six months later, it's just not, it's just not that at all. So it's weird for yeah, us. Yeah, I remember when I had an idea for the album cover and I showed them, like I made a fake album cover. I made, I put Brent Fias on there. <laughs> and I said, just imagine one of us, that's, that, that's where Brent Fias, and then that's what it'll look like. And then what came out, nothing like it, nothing like it. Nothing <laughs> like it. <laughs> Where'd the red yeah. ski mask idea come from? Like, why was that the kind of thing you wanted to brand like the whole album around? Was there like a specific, like, um like a message you wanted to portray with that or was it just something you liked i remember i remember, I remember well jamie told the ski mess i remember because we we named the album dope boys because i remember we were making music and one day he oh. went and showed his dad yeah. and then he said this sounds like dope boy music and i was like oh that's cool <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then when jamie heard the name we said let's do some photos like practice like making posters and branding for the new stuff just practice and then he was like Let's get some like ski mask, dope boy, or whatever. And yeah. I was like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> and we did that, and then it just went crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> it was like it was like a three AM conversation. It was like on the group chat. It was crazy. Yeah, I do remember that because that one that conversation built dope boys. It was like a four hour conversation. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. That's so funny because it seems like such like, an intentional, like plotted thing. But it's funny that it just arose from a conversation. I think some of the best ideas yeah. sometimes come from just like tired conversations or like just bullshitting you know just like riffing off something yeah. like those some, sometimes for me too that's where like the best ideas come from what sure, uh, right. when you guys are like so for for the project what was the creative process like for most of it like were you guys like writing lyrics and then bringing it out to production point or like did you write did you all write together or like what was kind of the way you bounced off each other creatively um I guess so. Basically, Jamie works his ass off. He, he, you know, he pays bills for his family, helps him to pay the bills. He works all the time. He boxes too. So me and David, I, all I do is work. Because I, I dropped out of high school, I just, I just work at Walmart. And David is in college, 
And so what we would do is David would sleep me into his dorm room. I just live with him at his, at his dorm. Like I was just sneaking in there after work and just living there. And basically it was David makes a while his roommates were out were in class. He make he make beats. And with the time we had like a three hour, not three, like an hour time limit to make music every almost every day until we got to till the summer came. But he'd make a beat, I'd write, it'd be like a verse or a hook. We call those ringtones instead of demos, because it's not long enough to be a song like anything. So we just we just make like 30 second songs. <clears throat> And Dave was still making, he was still learning how to make beats like that because we were rapping on tight beats a long time ago. And so he was learning how to make beats. I was learning how to mix. I was already mixing a little bit because he taught me, David taught us everything. He taught us how to do all the shit we do now, like rap and mix and all that. So I was still learning how to mix, like, you know, pretty decently. And so he would, he'd make a beat, I'd write, I'd mix everything, do that, you know, within, within an hour. And it was just like that until the summer came. And then it was just make a beat and then I'd rap. But we get more, we get more quality. I remember we were getting more quality because so we were doing it more often. It was just that. And then end of the summer, my parents leave the house for like a week to go on vacation. Jamie comes over, we spend the whole week together and we ruined the album. Like their album was ruined for like a week because we didn't know we didn't know what to do. But over time we just took what we had and just compressed it down and just finished it out. And then we released it in October. That's crazy that you only had that like one hour window to like produce at that uh, point was that like did that make you want to go even harder like would you like get sorry. in there like would you get in there get that hour and then be like damn like i wish i had more time and then come back motivated tomorrow to go even harder yeah no 100 i would say too like it'd be, it'd be more like a recording window time frame more mm -hmm. so than the beats because i may be on my headphones all day long but uh, yeah for us to actually sit down and yell into a microphone without a roommate's going hey yeah <laughs> keep it down but uh yeah, definitely. No, I definitely inspired the next day because we'd be like, we got to go hard. We got to, because it feels like you're not doing nothing. It, dude, it's the worst one. Yeah. Bro. Not doing shit is, we hate it. We hate not doing shit. It's I feel like we have to be doing something musical at all times. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll play our games, of course, but like, we still got to work on something. If it's pictures, music videos, stuff like this, as long as it's helping Omni get 1% better, that's the goal every day. I think you should wake up every single day with like, the intention to get better. You know, like whether yeah. it, in, in whatever way, like like be it like you, you you record one song, be it you do one thing, just something, just get better in some way. Yeah. Um. So you guys said you recorded the entire album at the dorm room completely, right? So that you, there was no studio or anything at all. You were just totally home recorded. Oh. Well, it's not all in the dorm, but it was no professional studios though, for sure. Like some days we'd have to record in a car, like legit in the back seat. And uh, some days we were recording in Jordan's room. Some days we'd be in this room that we're in right mm -hmm. now. Some days we'd be in the dorm room. Our, our studio is portable. Mm -hmm. And that's why you see the car at the end of all our videos where it has a car and Omni. And it's if you look closely, the record label is Backseat Records because we made some of them yeah. in the backseat. So, yeah. We're very, we're very DIY. We just did everything ourselves. Like we mixed it and mastered it ourselves. Just everything it was arranged. We just did everything ourselves. It was just, it's just easier that way. It's, like, it's, just, it's not a waste of time. We just do what we got to do and get it done. Because I trust these. Crazy. And I, just, I trust some people more than anybody in the world. So it's just, just do it ourselves. Yeah, I literally don't even like, I don't even ask Jordan what I want with my voice. Like, he already knows yeah. what's, what to do and what. Like, we know each other so well. That's what it is. That's wild. So you said, um, so after like putting that project out, did you do now? I, I know you mentioned you're working on your second project already. Do you have like more of an opportunity to, to record like at professional studios now? Or like, are you pretty much still doing the DIY stuff in the dorm room, in the car, whatever it may be? Well, we signed with Active Management and it's still more, we're still core recording in the room. We're still bedroom artists in the end of the day. We're still DIY. But when we come to LA, it's going to be very, there's going to be some stuff in the summer when we release stuff. Uh, if we do, whenever we start we'll dropping stuff, it's gonna be it's gonna look a little more high quality, and plus we're also gonna I'm gonna buy a, we're, all, we're all gonna buy a cinema camera too just to bump up the quality a little bit. It's gonna be DIY in the day, but it's, I want we do want the quality to go up more and the visuals and the sound of it. But it's still gonna be recording in this room. We might we're gonna go to a studio in LA record something there, but end of the day we're never gonna. Yeah, I would say majority still gonna be yeah. at home. It's, it's just when we work best. Yeah, I would say, but who knows? That probably change one day. Though. Would you guys ever move out there, or do you do you intend to stay in Atlanta? Uh, I want to move out there for like a year just to see what we can do, like mm -hmm. connection wise. I know LA 
it, it takes one year, one good year of going out, making connections to change someone's life. Because yeah. do killers open up, do killers open up for baby trying to like, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying, that's bro. So, 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 so I'm like, dude, if you can, if, if we're in LA and if we're doing what we're doing now, just making connections with people, we, who knows what we have, but we can open up for someone crazy just like them. So it's just, I do, I do that for the experience and the networking more than the living. Yeah, it's weird. I, I, I like, the city of LA doesn't really interest me. It's 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 like the the industry that is there, and it's not even like it's not even like the fact there's people there. Like the bigger thing for me is like I just feel like there there's like more artists I could work with that like how like take their music more seriously. You know what I mean? Because like it, it and it's no shot at the bay, but it's like I, I feel like if if you move to LA, you inadvertently are taking your music pretty seriously. So the odds that like the odds that you'll you'll take your music serious enough to like be able to like you know kind of grow and then and and just like have content that grows with you it's just like a little bit higher yeah yeah 100 percent. you guys ever been to cali or no no uh, <laughs> that's the first time it's about to be yeah about to be there lord willing lord willing, yeah, lord willing the plane don't crash <laughs> that's funny um so you mentioned uh jordan you're in school right no, I'm in school. Oh, that's right. Okay. How, how do you work like with balancing like school and then music? Is is that a hard kind of line to toe? Because I I I know like as a college student, it can be a lot. Yeah. To be honest, I don't worry about school at all. I do everything last minute, <laughs> and then I just worry. About music, What's crazy? Honest. This this nigga just gets A's. Like he just got an A the other day for not even trying. You just finesse a school. It's ridiculous. That's what. That's how we'd be in high school. We'd always find a way up. I we'd fail. Clutch it. We don't give a fuck. We would always just annoy the teachers and the classmates and shit. But we'd always end up being like the the smartest ones in the classroom. <laughs> I wouldn't say smartest, but <laughs> the smartest, <laughs> most successful. Yeah, we. Were, yeah, I remember our English teacher one time. She was like. She like she. I mean, she saw her stuff, but she she came up to us and she was like, "I didn't know y'all could do that." And I was like, <laughs> like "Dude, <laughs> I didn't know y'all could do that." Or, yeah, well, I think we did a paper or something. She made us rap in that class. Oh, oh I remember that. Like, I never seen it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just remembered that. I, yeah, she made us rap in front of the whole uh, class for a project one time. That was so embarrassing, dude. <laughs> That's so like fucking manipulative like the fact that she would make <laughs> like 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 she figures out you rap and then she makes you do that that that's that's messed up bro oh i mean well she she made everybody rap she made everybody oh. sing, but yeah but it just made it worse because people knew that we rapped so they were kind of like oh okay yeah come on yeah <laughs> you guys do this <laughs> yeah <laughs> and um did a lot of people at your high school like know about your music Oh, uh, yeah. My, yeah, my, my school, they knew. Yeah, they knew. Yeah, I would say. Our homie Brody, shout out Brody. He's our, uh, he's our roadie. He's, he's just, he, every time we have a show, he pulls up. He was our, he was technically, I don't want to say our first, he was our, he was like our first supporter because I showed him like our first stuff like way back like 2018. And he was like, bro, this is, y'all are going to do big things. And I told this man from day one, every time we have a show, you're coming and he's not missed a show. I love that man. He just, but he, but he keeps us. At, uh, the school I went to, he was just keeping us like he was letting everyone know about us all the time. So they and they were definitely. So yeah, my he's school, real. he's running our home. He definitely like. Keeps I would say, them. yeah, not say that our school was kind of the people knew definitely like in our grade, but um, I would say they didn't really care. But the people who also made music in our grade, shout out uh, Jay Distortion and Lil Fetty, uh, they knew for sure because they were wanting to make music with us. Did you guys make like, a lot of stuff before you put the project out? Like how like how much stuff did you have like in the vault before Dope Boys? Oh God, dude, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. We had three albums out on SoundCloud, and then we were like, we were doing boom bap back in the day. We were and we were like, uh -huh. we woke up. God woke us up and said, y'all got to stop. <laughs> and we just got rid of all of it and started over from scratch. Why did yeah. you do that? Like, like what about what you were doing made you want to just kind of change oh, direction? No. I got. I yeah, I got burnt out on just the sound of Boom Bap probably just because I was, we were doing it for so long. And it's just like kind of like Jamie, I feel like he said there's kind of rules to it in a way to sound good. You can't say certain things without being kind of corny on it. Yeah, you can't no freedom on it. No freedom. Yeah. And like the stuff that we make, obviously, we can portray ourselves. We can say the stupidest shit. But like Jordan said, it can go hard. 
like the way you say things can go hard but in boom bap is very baseline you got to follow step guideline and it's just it's just like tongue in cheek nothing yeah. like out of the like out of the ordinary you know what i'm saying yeah. but and i still I'm gone yeah i still love it though yeah. like i still love boom bap and everything like the i believe that is the far side from the bay Aren't the they? far or side california yeah uh, they're from i have, i don't know it but they have one of my favorite albums of all time this boom bap like uh-huh. the, the bizarre ride of the far uh-huh. side it's just mm-hmm. i just got burnt out on it i mean we all like it yeah no boom bap shaped on me but i feel like it also talks a lot in the sense of how we should work together how to make music and how to brand because we, we were not branding at all our branding was awful music videos were trash we we're just like this is not it so we, we just we spent a whole summer or we spent a whole eight months it took us a year to make dope boys and we we're just learning that year how to make beats how to how to brand properly and all that but no i respect boom bap a lot it, it, not boom bap made me it's for sure it made me who i am so I'm, and at I'm the like, point we were having fun too no oh, yeah that's the whole thing it's like when we're making music we're having fun it doesn't matter how deluded we are like we're having fun <laughs> we really thought like like our first tapes would be like bro could this blow us up and it was like complete trash no I but like that's in a sense being deluded kind of helps you in a way to like achieve greater things mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so you, you guys like, need to be- so you guys like completely switched everything up and now you're kind of in a different phase almost. What um what do you think like are the biggest things you've learned since then in terms of like marketing and then also just your music in general? Branding is the biggest thing yeah. I've learned. That's probably the best thing we've ever learned. Like it, it, I think it's the funnest part of making music. Making music is awful. Recording it, making <laughs> the album is so terrible. I hate it. We all hate it. But when you're done, it's like it's like losing weight. It, losing the weight is trash working out is trash but it, when you see when you see that six pack those your, your body you're like this is i'm glad i did this yeah. and like like branding taking pictures making music videos editing and putting it together and making the art is like the, i'm glad we did this yeah i think i do it more for fulfillment than fun yeah. i would say like i just feel yeah. like i love i have a ton of fun when i'm done with a project yeah. and i can just listen to it and i'm like yeah we we expressed what we wanted to that was fun but the, sometimes the process is not fun. Yeah, the process is not. Right now, like this is a like our next album. We're still like it's it's so hard. We're we're figuring it out, but it's like annoying because we're like fuck. Where do we go? <laughs> <laughs> we're like we're hitting a, like we're we're breaking through the wall to like to like where we're going, but it's like oh it's tough. I like what you said, David, about like like it, it, I do it for fulfillment, not for fun. That's like an interesting thing because I think a lot of people would say those are the same thing but they're definitely not you know what i mean like yeah. i can definitely relate to doing something like above the bridge like i do love it i do love what i do it's, it's a lot of fun i do have fun doing it but i i get more out of the fulfillment than i do the fun you know what i mean like yeah. i do enjoy like looking back at what i've made more than i do making it sometimes and that's a weird thing it's a weird line to tote but you have to always remember like why you started things you have to remember that like if you if you're not, if you're not loving it or being fulfilled by it then why are you doing it yeah no 100 percent. yeah yeah and i do have fun making music sometimes like was sometimes oh, yeah. sometimes it's you'll make a beat and you're like oh dude this is this is fire and then jordan will get on it it's like dude no way you just did that and then and then the energy will go crazy yeah. but sometimes but the thing is with music and just anything in general, you have to work extremely hard if you want to make it your career. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you, there's gonna you're gonna have to work on days when you don't want to, and you know you got to force yourself to find inspiration. And those are the days where it's hard. Yeah. But at the same time, you have to. You got to push through. When did you um? When did you first start producing? Like, like what was your kind of first step into learning the world of production? So, take it back to middle school. I tried to make dubstep because of phase <laughs> uh, I was like, still goes hard. Still yeah no we still like dubstep here wild uh what is that is that rocky song oh wild, 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 wild for the night yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hard. yeah i wouldn't make it today but no. still but it's fire uh but yeah i was i was in a sniping clan back in the day i was like dude i can make the dubstep yeah, really. like i can make the montage music and then it was that's where i learned how to kind of <laughs> produce but then i was like you know let's make rap beats instead of dubstep but yeah that's an interesting way to like learn production i've never i don't think i've ever heard anybody talk about like like i'm gonna make i'm gonna i'm gonna make a, a <laughs> montage be, montage songs and then it's funny to even describe electronic music as like montage songs yeah <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are you going to school for are you in school for music no i'm in school for 
history education. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very like different world than music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, um, do you guys have like a fave or is there was there a song on the project that like was harder to make than the rest of them? Like was there one that like stood out as like the most difficult song to like write to? Maybe it was like a beat that was hard to write to or anything? I'm gonna say for me, it's two songs. I'm not, the second one's not hard, but it's it was like how we saved it. But the biggest one is Willie, because I hated it at first. I'm like, this song is not this song should not make it. Song's but hard. then but <laughs> dude, I know no, that was hard, but like I was like, this is not dude, if you heard it early stage, like you I you might understand probably I don't know, but it was still hard. It was no, hard. But, <laughs> uh, but they they was like, well, watch this. And we he sat there and then like I was at home. He said, here you go. And he got mad at RuneScape and made that, made, <laughs> he sent me that verse. I'm like, okay, I'm a snap. And then, <laughs> then he made, and then, and then three months later, he made the second part of it, which is Backhand. And we, we were like there, we made like eight songs that day. We made a bunch of songs that day going crazy. And he took, we said, dude, I'll walk Cause we're trying to make a song to replace Willie cause we thought we wasn't going to make it. And he ended up making Backhand and just put them together. And dude, that was, we lost our mind. Mm. That was like an accident. And then so that was two songs? Yeah, no, yeah, that was two different songs. Because the backhand part doesn't sound like 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 another song. Like it it, it's, it works very cohesively. Like the way it kind of slows down and then it kind of like flows into the other one. Like that sounds like a production choice where it's like it was almost one song. That's really crazy. That was two. Yeah, I will. I will say I was like I was trying to remake Willie. Like I was trying to give a song with that same feeling. So I copied the drum pattern. Like and then that that's and the same BPM, so that yeah. definitely gave it a cohesiveness probably between the two. How many songs did you guys like cut from the project? Like, was there like a bunch of tracks that didn't make the cut? I say probably about like I counted them the other day. We made two hundred dope boy songs and we took it down to nine. Yeah, and that's not including the beats that I made that no one got on either. Yeah, we I went mean- stupid. I'd be interested to hear, like, were those your nine favorite or were they just nine that you thought worked really well together? Those were, I think those are just the most, I, mean, I, I think it was the nine favorite. Yeah. yeah. Those are nine, nine favorite. They ended up just working together really well. What about, like, um, like, I, I noticed that, like, you have, so you, on, your, on streaming right now, you, you, you just have that album out. I know you mentioned that you had a bunch of songs out before, but was there any like reason you didn't want to like drop a single from the album before you dropped the project or like, was there a reason you just want to drop the project as it is here? It is a full body of work. Um, we, we did drop like technically singles cause we just dropped the music video like on YouTube. Oh, so you didn't drop on stuff. streaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we didn't drop it on streaming. I just think I like doing that because sometimes I like you to see the song and the visual, mm-hmm. you know, together. Cause I feel like it, it helps. They both help each other. It helps build the world. Yeah. And then after that, we just released them all after like dope. Uh, it was Willie, Brittany and dope boys. Yeah. Yeah. I think like in the modern music industry, you kind of have to have a good visual. If you want your song to pop, it's kind of vice versa, you know, like the song or the visual is <laughs> arguably as important as the song now. And it goes back to what no. you're talking about, like branding. Like branding and yeah. crafting a specific image for like your release or even like your artistry is like so so vital. You have to have you have to like look like something. You have to be something. You have to I give people like a character and image to invest in. You know. You have one hundred percent, and that's the biggest thing I think we learned from the last album because we would just put out the music and be like, "Why we blow? Hey, where my where my check?" <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> um. Some of the beats in the project. David, like a lot of it was almost like '90s influence to me. Like, like, like Tony, for example, that beat sounds like very '90s. Was there like a a specific artist or specific like genre you guys were listening to, like around the time you made the project that like inspired you a lot and inspired the production? Uh, I would say my '90s influence just probably comes out because of my boom bap phase, probably just every once in a while. But I would say I was listening to a lot of Kenny Beats. I was listening to a lot of Timbaland. I was listening to a lot of Baby Keem. No, at the time, that. like crazy, and, and I know it's crazy. If you listen to that, you're like, I don't know. Um, we were also just AG Club was dropping. Oh yeah, AG. we were. That was around the. That was all we won. That was our biggest inspiration. That was one of our biggest inspirations. With AG Club. Yeah. Shout out to AG, AG. Andy, AG. California, baby. Yeah, real. I live 15 minutes from where they grew up. Oh, for real? That's fire. Yeah. AG Club, they're 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 personal to us because they they fuck with us like before anyone else really did. 
because like we were making boom bap stuff baby boy was like supporting us tweeting it out and even now like recently they hit us up saying congrats and everything so they're, now they're very very close to us so we, we love, love, them. Them. love them how'd you guys tap yeah. in with them originally you just you set them up oh no yeah as soon as memphis dropped like i think like not dropped but like when it started getting noise i just found it had like three thousand views and i tweeted out like the, the hook um and baby boy and jody just liked to retweeted it and then they followed me and then I, was, I dm baby boy and we just got to talking and we were just saying and, and then he uh we, i sent him one of our songs off of our other like our old album his like, was just excuse as far as we fucked with it he just kept in contact and then we'll, we'll we'll talk here and there we'll tweet sometimes not like we'll, we'll, we'll i'll comment he'll like it and then he'll like my tweets and he'll, he'll shout out omni if we drop something it's just stuff like that it's just it's just respect really yeah to each other it's really I can cool. totally see the influence. Honestly, you you guys as like a as like a trio kind of like remind me of the formation of AG in a lot of ways. It's almost like it's it's it, it not even like your music, but just like the the way you guys kind of like are like the ethos. It it, don't, it feels genuine, you know. And like mm-hmm. AG feels very genuine to me, and you, you guys do as well. I it's like even I mean I, I it's not like I put out music, but like speaking from somebody who's just like seeing some seeing something like them come out of like where i'm from is like incredibly inspiring because they're like the biggest artists to come out of like the east bay area in like yeah. a very long time and like like they just got like they're, they're playing summer smash like it's crazy yeah. that the tour with denzel curry like it's crazy the opportunities they're getting and it's just it's very inspiring to see somebody like locally like get to that place you know kind of lets you know it's possible 100 percent that's crazy are you guys tapped in with like a lot of local like Georgia music out there? Like, is there a lot of like local artists you fuck with? Uh, just from ones from our town, like like I said before, Jay Distortion, Rise, Lil Fetty. But yeah, no. I wouldn't say like Georgia as a whole. I don't really know much besides I just know the big ones from Atlanta, like Earth Gang, JID, Kenny Mason, Mike. Killer Mike. Yeah. The closest thing to like having somewhat of a connection with someone uh, in Georgia is like being signed to the same management team as Killer Mike around the Georgia. Yeah. So that's sick. That's that's pretty cool. Um, do you guys play a lot of shows out there? Like, have you like performed a lot yet, or what? Hmm? We played two shows at uh, in Athens, but we only played like three shows ever. So, yeah. Is that is that is that something you want to start doing more? I oh, know. Yeah, we're going crazy. Like as soon as, as much as we can this summer with shows. We're trying to get as many. I'm trying to figure out how to get us as many shows with our, and me. I said our manager trying to figure out where we can get our shows from. Just running up this summer. We're going crazy on shows. That's sick. It's a really good way to like grow your local fan base. You know what I mean? Like just get people locally to fuck with you and then you kind of gain a following and a fan base that way. I want to ask you about um, Mama's Money, the interlude on the project a little bit. What was the, uh, what was the kind of the idea behind like including almost like a mini song, like an interlude type thing? Cause it's not like it was like a straight up interlude, but it it was like definitely like by long and away the shortest song on the project. So what was kind of the idea behind that? Like what, what did you want that to tell? I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> is it gonna this is gonna be an, anticlimactic? <laughs> I recorded a verse and David and Jamie didn't want to touch the song because in the sense of they just liked how it was. And I put the end of it and they just said do this dinner loop and threw it on the album. That was it. It was just <laughs> verse was hard, beat was hard. Yeah. We, we didn't want to like fuck with it because we loved how it was. So we just made it an interlude and just threw it on the album. And we thought it was a good transition into Black Mini Fan. Yeah, it definitely is. Did you guys expect, like, I, I know Black Minivan did, like, pretty well. Same with Willie on the project. Did What was the reception like for those songs? Like, were you expecting them to kind of, like, get the streams they did and, like, get the traction and kind of be your most popular songs? Uh, I would say definitely. I, I think. Personally, you were talking about it. You talked about it. I think Willie and Black Minivan, like, that's actually, like, my favorite songs off the tape. And mm-hmm. I think, like, personally, that they were going to do great. But the one that surprised me the most was Mama's Money and Blue Sprite. I honestly thought Blue Sprite was going to be like a hit. Oh, yeah. I thought it was going to be a hit and everyone was just going to fuck with it. And Mama's Money being like an interlude kind of is just like crazy how it's getting the same numbers as a, like a single where all three of us are on it. What I like about it's Mama's Money like- is like, honestly, I, one thing I love about how short it is, is like in the car. Because for whatever reason, like if I'm like, if, if, I, if I go in my car, and then I was like listening to your guys' project. It's just there. I'll just click on Mama's Money, like while I'm queuing another song, or like e- e- even if I'm yeah. just like, even if I have it there and I'm like going to listen to somebody else, I'll just press play on it 
like because it takes me like 40 seconds or 50 seconds to like cue somebody else so it's almost just like <laughs> it's it'll act as like a little preface to like whatever i'm listening to so like it it, it, <laughs> it works very well so i could see like how it rack up streams that way yeah for sure yeah. that's crazy because we wanted the album to be like a car ride long like we mm-hmm. want our music to, our albums to not be so like an hour longer like i think for us 30 minutes to 25 is a good album because it gets in it gets out as long as it makes you feel like you're in a whole new world it takes you out of your world makes you have fun that's the point of our, of our music so I'm, I'm glad you can let's start music in the car that's that's that was like oh for us so yeah that's crazy and definitely not have people just like sit down and have to analyze it and just like you know study our shit in the real world <laughs> that's what boom bap does people have yes. to like people have to study it and what all did that. he mean when he said he was gonna go to the store <laughs> <laughs> that's gotta be deeper than like, like no. the music. store yeah. the cool. minivan <laughs> yeah like well, i said though be- bro like I'm 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 for real a fan of you guys. Like I really do love the, the tape. Like it's been on repeat. Like it's been heavy in the rotation recently. Like I'm I'm a big fan of it. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate yeah, it. no, for real. I appreciate you guys. Um, last thing I really want to ask you, what in like the next like foreseeable future, like what is your biggest what are your biggest goals musically within the next year, the next two years? Like, what do you want to do that you haven't done yet? Got it. We'll say just say one. We'll just say one goal that we have. Yeah, you have that. It's the biggest one, I think, for me. Um, it's just a bunch like a just binge worthy content that you can everyone can just make as much content this year. And everyone can just go like if they're like I, I binge I binge a bunch of artists content just for just for like fun like Brock Hampton, AG Club, Tyler. Just like they have a bunch of content that you can just binge and watch and just enjoy. Like it just gets you out. Like if you're having a bad day, just go in there and binge all the content, music videos, shows they make, short like just short stuff they have to watch that's a big thing for me just a bunch of content you can just binge of quality and enjoy it and just you know hopefully you can just make your day better music or just video or shows or whatever yeah. and hopefully by the end of the year for me personally it's like have a cult following not like sparsed out and like people kind of fuck with you and all that type of stuff but like have some like have people that ride or die for you you know what i'm saying like that type of stuff but people are actually fans they'll show love they'll share and everything it's that cult mentality and personal, like actually yeah. like befriend them and everything. And then for me is work with a Kenny. It could be Kenny Beats, Kenny Mason, Kenny G. Kenny G. Just Kenny. It could be Kenny. Kenny from down the road. <laughs> the you guys know you guys know Kenny can fly. And that is? Uh, he, he's hard. Another fire ass Kenny. Uh what other Kenny's are there? Yeah, Kenny There's G. Like- yeah. All right. Top top five Kenny's right now. <laughs> I do. I do. Okay, I'm no, one. it's Kenny Beats one. Kenny Beats is number one. No, nah, he's two. There's yeah. one. Oh, Kenny no. Mason. What the? I love Kenny, Kenny Mason's Man. hard. Kenny Mason, Kenny Beats, Kenny G. Um, Kenny from down the road. Kenny, Kenny, Kenny Beats is two because he's the Polish. Kenny is a Polish. You can't say that? I can't say that. I can't say that. Nah, dude. Kenny don't like that. Oh, you can't say that. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Kenny. I don't want to be. Uh, okay. we'll Kenny. Kenny. <laughs> all right well i lost the kenny co right where does right. where does like kenny from south park rank because me personally oh, i gotta put kenny from south park up there he might got it before i've under kenny g yeah this, oh, this, uh, kenny g is number one ah uh, dude this is hard hot take hot take right there but this is hard well you put kenny g over kenny mason dude kenny g's a legend Hot that, that, okay, wait. Okay, it's because you're not from Atlanta. <laughs> that's fast. That's fast. <laughs> what about what about Kenny Loggins? Oh my God, bro! I didn't even think about that. Man. I just looked up famous Kennys. <laughs> Dude, Kenny Loggins. You don't know, you don't know about Kenny Loggins? Me either. That's crazy. <laughs> who's Kenny? Who's Kenny Loggins? <laughs> Is he a country singer? Yeah. Okay. Well, then yeah, I was dude. Okay, Kenny, Ken, Kenny Chesney. I don't know, okay, I don't know Kenny Chesney. We know Kenny Chesney. Wait, yeah, okay, hold on. We'll do this. Okay. Kenny Beats. Let's we'll, we'll agree. Let's we'll agree on this. We'll do this. Kenny Beats. Kenny no, Beats I'm sorry. No, no. Kenny Mason, Kenny G, Kenny Beats, Kenny from South Park, and Kenny Loggins. Oh, sorry. Kenny Chesney. Sorry. That's a solid ranking. That's solid. That's right solid. solid. That's a great one. That's solid. I think that's Everybody, nah, comment, nah. comment your top five candies down below. 
We need to know. <laughs> All right, guys. Appreciate you. Thank you for hopping on, bro. I love you guys. Appreciate you coming on the show. Love your guys' stuff for real. Like, I appreciate it. And I'm a fan. Thank, Thank you, bro. bro. Thank you, bro. Love you guys yeah. a lot. Of course, of course. Appreciate you guys. Tell them where they can hear your stuff. Stream Dope Boys. Where can they listen to the project, etc.? Um, MySpace. MySpace, Twitter. Title. Uh, Deezer. Music, Spotify, <laughs> SoundCloud, Amazon Prime, Amazon, your mama's basement. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, Walkman, um, if you still got one. Your IP, IP, your phone, player. IP, yeah. your Blackberry. iPod Nano. Basically mm. everywhere. If you, if you listen to music, you'll find a song. YouTube. is dope Dope Boys. Yeah. Don't forget the exclamation point. Please don't. Exclamation point is important. <laughs> exclamation point. All right, y'all. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, you. All right, music matters.